The Nivene Canal is described by some as France's most beautiful canal, and it's part of a circular ring of four canals running through Burgundy. Less than two hours by slow train from Paris, it takes you through some of the loveliest countryside in central France. You can explore medieval villages, centuries-old vineyards and fortified chateaux, and enjoy French food and wine at its very best. The wine industry attracts many tourists, and this canal in Burgundy in France offers a full selection of vineyards and many, many villages where you can visit and taste. There are also some good restaurants and some great places to hike. Hot in summer, the canal is best visited in spring and autumn. There are scenic places to moor up, and the lock keepers are friendly, except sometimes during their lunch break. The entire region is based on wine, the production, marketing and consumption of wine, and every village has something to taste and something to sample. You have ample time to explore the area, visit the local markets, taste local wine and cheese, and stop off and enjoy the beautiful scenery that unfolds around every corner. Parts of the canal pass through deep forest areas. The canal was once a major transport route, supplying timber to Paris. The Canal de Nivernay was in fact born from the need for wood in Paris. The logs from local forests were floated down the river in rafts. Men rode on these rafts with poles, in the same way as the North American lumberjacks. Today, the canal is used for recreation by boaters, hikers and cyclists. There are two companies offering hire boats and many luxury hotel barges which cruise between Auxerre and Clemency. The villages are small and many only have one restaurant which isn't always open. Weekly markets are held on different days in different places, so if you are barging it's important to plan and book ahead. The scenery is lovely and for the most part finding a place with water and electricity to moor overnight is not difficult. There are different charges for mooring in different places and some villages don't charge at all. We had very hot weather so we moored in the shade as much as possible. The boat company provides you with a detailed guidebook in English and the route itself is very easy to follow. Locks were all working well, and we found the lock keepers were friendly, mostly with a smattering of English, and grateful to have some help operating the manual locks. Locks in the countryside typically have a small house for the lock keeper, who may be required th to cover three or four locks using his small car or van. We found it advisable to make arrangements to ensure that the locks will be covered for the next few hours, always remembering the lock keeper's all-important break for lunch. The one-week route from Tenne to Megens covers 100 kilometers with 49 locks and requires only 24 hours of direct cruising, leaving you lots of time to explore the area. The canal winds through the countryside past small picturesque villages and hamlets with names like Clemency, Viselay, Châtel saint soir and Vermenton. The Canal de Nivernay is part river and part canal. Between Clemency and Auxerre, the route you cruise is on the river Yonne for most of the way, and here the locks change from rural to industrial. Let's take a look at our route in a bit more detail. From Paris, you'll most likely travel to Dijon by TGV, and then catch a local train to the boat depot at Tenay. You'll collect your boat from the boat depot at Tanay, where you'll be given full instructions and shown how to work the locks and look after the boat. Proceeding north, the first village you'll reach is Clamacy, which is locally known as the capital of the Valais of Lyon, and marketed as a centre for outdoor activity-based vacations. This town enjoyed great prosperity in earlier years, thanks to the timber from the huge forests which were processed and floated down the river to Paris. 
If you have time, it's worthwhile detouring to nearby Vizile, a UNESCO World Heritage Hilltop Town. Absolutely beautiful. The next town, Chateau saint soir is a small village of about 700 people. There's a castle on the hill overlooking the town. Um, the town is also known as a holiday resort to the French people. The next village is Mele les Chateaux. The chateau itself was originally a fortified stronghold and it's still encircled by its medieval walls. It sits high above the countryside overlooking the Yonne River and the Nivernais Canal and has unobstructed views stretching for miles around, well worth visiting. At this point, amongst the most spectacular sites on the canal is the Rochers de Sassois, a series of 50 meter high limestone cliffs beside the river, very much enjoyed by climbers who you can see from your boat. There's a very good restaurant at the base of the cliffs, open for lunch only. The next town, Verminton, has a supermarket, a pharmacy, a a a food shops, banks and a health center. The village has dozens of hectares under vines and places to taste everywhere. From there, you can enjoy a lunch stop at the delightful small village of Cravant with its timbered storefronts. This first stage of the Canal de Nivernais, before you get to Auxerre, is mostly about vineyards and the wine villages. But don't miss the caves de Bally la Pierre. In the Middle Ages, these were quarries tunneled into the side of a hill and they supplied stone for the Notre Dame de Paris and the Chartres Cathedral. The Caves de Bailly La Pierre is run by a cooperative of 71 wine growers who sell their Cremant and a huge selection of other wine varieties on site in the caves. These old underground chalk quarries cover an area of four hectares and provide unique natural conditions to mature the delicious sparkling Cremant de Bourgogne an equivalent to champagne. Guided tours and tastings are available every day in the summer months and the cool interior will give you a lot of relief from the midsummer heat. Vincelles in its nearby wine village of Iransi has a wine estate that since 1987 has been owned by the famous Ferrari family, the manufacturers of motor vehicles. Apparently you can visit for tasting and to the cellars, but best to check in advance. Auxerre. Many boaters moor up for a night or two in Auxerre, which is the largest town on the canal and the capital of the Yonne department and the fourth largest city in Burgundy. Auxerre boasts several fine monuments, including its 13th century cathedral, considered a masterpiece of Gothic art, and an abbey with medieval battlements and a treasure trove museum. The main town up the hill is a thriving centre for shopping with many bistros and street cafes. The countryside around Auxerre is famous for its production of fine burgundy wine, particularly Chablis, which is a white wine made from the Chardonnay grape. For, from Auxerre you can visit the town of Chablis by bus or taxi. The town has many overpriced wine bars and restaurants and is full of visitors in summer. And I can tell you, you can taste the same wine and eat at lower prices in the, in the neighbouring villages. The section from Auxerre to Megens is largely unremarkable, but before you hand your boat in, I recommend a bonus. After reaching our departure point at Megens a day early, we continued and arrived at the very quiet town of Joigny. It's a little gem of a town and a good place to wander through the narrow streets with their many half-timbered houses and art and craft shops. From the mooring point over the bridge across the river, we had a beautiful view of the town centre and its three churches before and after a thunderstorm. Back in McGinn's, our boat company recommended this superb restaurant for our final meal at the end of our canal boat holiday, and we were so glad they did. The evening menu offered three choices each for starters, main course and dessert for €24.50. The food and wine were all locally sourced. 
restaurant had just two people in the kitchen and two people serving. The home cooked food was exceptionally well presented and really delicious. Excellent value. You could choose foie gras with apricot or ravioli as a starter or fish followed by fondant au chocolat or panna cotta for dessert. I was tempted by the cheese board, the best cheeses I've ever tasted. The internet advises that the restaurant du Canal in Miguens, run by Nicholas and his family, managed to survive the pandemic by offering takeaways. The train journey from Miguens to Paris takes about 90 minutes and from Paris you can be in London on the Eurostar in two further hours. Truly the Canal de Nibonnet is the most beautiful canal in France.